Hello YouTube. So um, today's topic is how to become an armed security guard. Um, so for starters, to become a security guard, you need to be 18 years old. To become an armed security guard, you need to be at least 21 years old. If I remember correctly, just the common law says that buy a shotgun, uh, you have to be 18. To buy a handgun, you have to be 21. And I think that's why they came up with the 21-year-old rule. Now, I may be wrong because the laws change so often and uh, I don't keep up with them all the time. But um, I do believe it is, in California at least, to own a shotgun, 18, handgun, 21. But definitely to become an armed guard, you have to be 21 years old. Okay? Um, you have to be a U.S. citizen. Uh, you can't have a felony to become an armed guard. But you can become a security guard without a weapon uh, if you're a felon. But you have to apply for some sort of certificate. And now that's for California. And everything I'm basically telling you is um, California. It could be uh, different in other states. Then you have to pass a 14-hour course. Now this 14-hour... Sorry, I'm looking at my notes again. This 14-hour course consist of an eight hour classroom and six hour range so you know in that eight hour class you're pretty much going to watch videos um they're going to be really obvious they're going to say you know uh when you have a firearm don't ever wave it around don't use it to intimidate somebody don't ever shoot somebody in the back don't ever fire warning shots in the air you know, they're pretty obvious things, but I imagine at some point some people have done those things. And for that reason, you have to watch videos for the rest of your life just because of the people that ruined it for everybody else. Okay, so that um, eight-hour classroom time, we'll also discuss some laws and uh, you know when to shoot when not to shoot liability what what you can expect to happen after you have um, Shot your gun things like that. So again, that's eight hours. You'll talk about safety. It may talk about uh, different weapons and um, How to store them, etc One of the, I guess one of the most important things that I take out of the class is when you are armed, um, you pretty much, you, you know, you wake up in the morning, you get suited up, you put on your firearm, then you drive to the post. And when you're at that post, you can't just start like, oh, you know, I'm going to go shopping or I'm going to go to eat lunch at a restaurant. When you've got your handgun on you, no, you pretty much, you have to stay as a, at your designated post and you cannot leave. You, um you're stuck there for the whole day so they don't want you just driving around town with this handgun on you so you can only carry the gun on you during working hours after that um, end of the day you, you're supposed to drive straight home they even discourage you from stopping at the gas station uh, these are things I didn't know I mean I obviously knew that you can't you know drive around all day with the gun on your side but I didn't know that they discouraged you from stopping at a gas station they pretty much want you to just drive to your post, you know, have your gun on you for the day and then straight back home. So plan ahead, make sure your tank is full so you don't have to stop at gas stations, etc. Then you're going to, um, after the eight hour course, uh, assuming you pass that, there's going to be a couple or multiple tests that you have to take. After you pass that, then you're going to have to go to the range and um, qualify. So... <clears throat> You know, I was a little intimidated when I went to the range because I hadn't shot for about 10 years. And before that, I didn't have a lot of experience. So, you know, I brought my gun. And in the case of me, I have a, a 9mm Beretta 92 FS. Frank Sam FS. Um, so I hadn't shot for 10 years, but I did really well. Uh, when it started, the target was really close to us. The instructor did really good at his job. Uh, he showed us the basics. So, um, gosh, I, this is going to be way off. But I remember, like, 
to qualify. We had to shoot just within the circle roughly 10 times. Then they said, okay, now you're going to shoot with one hand 10 times, and then you're going to shoot with the left hand 10 times. And the reason for this is that there's an assumption if you ever get shot in one of your hands, you're not going to be able to hold uh, the gun with two hands. So they uh, want you to practice with one hand in case you do get shot with the other and you're not able to use both hands. Uh, interesting enough, though, when I shot with one hand, I got it dead center almost every time. I guess my body fights like my right hand wants to turn this way, my left hand wants to turn this way, and then when I pull the trigger, uh, the the bullet tends to get off. But when you have one hand, your your body's not fighting. You know your your hands aren't fighting for power, and it tends to stay stay straighter. And uh, in, at least in my case, I was more accurate when it came to shooting. So suffice to say, I'm a really good one-handed shooter. At one point, I actually started turning it, so I started to feel a little bit gangster. I was like shooting it sideways, but I was hitting it dead center every time. Uh, so yeah, you'll go to the range. Then, once you qualify, and again, don't be nervous about qualifying. You would really have to have the worst aim in the world to not qualify. Uh, there was a guy next to me, and he was just shooting all over the place. I mean, literally. So this is your target. He would, he would shoot about five here, two here, one here. Never once did he even get close to the center. And after they counted up all the shots, they added it up and said, you know what? Uh, you passed. They just want to make sure that you are uh, hitting the center mass. And the center mass is, again, the chest, the torso, the stomach area. So that, that was the gist of it. They want to make sure that you exhibit safety. Uh, you know, you don't put your finger on the trigger until you're ready to shoot. So you always have it uh, sticking straight down. And then when the uh, instructor tells you to shoot, it is only then you put your finger on the trigger and pull. So they just want to make sure that you can um, exhibit safety habits and that you could shoot center mass. Uh, at the end of the course, they encourage everybody to go to the range multiple times a year to improve on their shooting. Uh, I have since went to the range quite a few times and have really improved on my shooting. I got to know my gun really well. Um, so then after the... Uh, class which is a six hour range uh oh i think they they require you shoot 100 rounds that day too so i did fire 100 ra uh, rounds i think i shot like 95 rounds and then the instructor saw i had five left and he says no you have to shoot the rest of them to get at 100 so i ended up just shooting five of them uh almost rapid fire which we're not supposed to but i just wanted to try it out and finished off those last five rounds so yeah, you'll, you'll basically shoot about 100 rounds that day. Like 30 of them will be practice rounds. And then 25 or maybe 30 of those would be actual rounds that they score. So the first 30 or 40 or 50 rounds, uh, you're going to fire. And then the instructor is going to kind of critique you and tell you where you need to improve. One guy was kind of interesting. He just could not hit the damn paper. He would He would be all over the place. So the instructor said, well, let me see your gun. Maybe there's something wrong with it. So I didn't know this, and the guy didn't know this either. The instructor pulled the magazine out of the gun. Some of you guys call it a clip. Uh, I think the proper term is a magazine. So I pulled it out. He racked it and took out the bullet. And the guy and me as well were not really paying attention. So this gun was not loaded at all. So he told the guy, all right, I want you to try shooting the uh, target now. So this guy had no idea there was no ammunition in the gun, including myself. So when the guy went to pull the trigger, right before he pulled the trigger, he went like this. Like he lifted his hand up and the instructor says, well, there's your problem. You're anticipating your shot. So, you know, you would have never known that had there not been, had there been bullets in there, you would have thought that his hand was jerking because of the recoil. But the truth is he was making an artificial recoil because he was anticipating the shot. He was getting nervous. And every time he would lift his hand up, and therefore the bullet would go off and not hit the target. So the instructor called him out on it and said, look at that. Um, there's no reason why you should recoil when nothing came out of the barrel when you pull the trigger. The next shot, uh, the guy 
he says, okay, well, I'm not going to do that anymore. He pulled the trigger, and he hit it almost dead center. So, you know, there you go. It's just having a good instructor is really important. He helped me out a lot, too. Um, again, I, I didn't... Man, I've had this gun for so many years, but I haven't fired it enough to know all the mechanics of it. And he gave me some tips and pointers and would ask me, why are you doing this or why are you doing that? Or, um, Anyways, so after you pass the course, which you will, don't worry about it, um, they're going to submit a firearm permit to BSIS. Well, again, this is in California. When you go on their website, it says that the average initial firearm permit can take like 75 days. In my case, it did. I mean, I would literally check that website every day to see if I got approved. And all it would say was pending every single day. Um, you know, I started getting impatient because I wanted to get this permit so that I can get onto better job sites and make more money. So um, on the 70th day, I did get a letter in the mail and it was from uh, the BSIS. And it said, well, it didn't say congratulations. It basically says, uh, okay, now you need to go do a psych exam. So they wanted to send me to get a psychological exam, which is a law in California that was passed of, in July of 2019, I believe, where everybody that uh, becomes an armed security guard has to take like a 80-question uh, psych exam. The questions, uh, I think they were just trying to see if you were a loner, if you had depression. Uh, some of the questions were like, do you find yourself often by yourself in the room? Uh, do you find yourself being lonely? Have you ever had suicidal thoughts? So they're just trying to weed out people that may have obvious issues. The reality of it is, I think it's just a way for California to extract more money out of you because the test was so obvious i could see what they were trying to get at uh, some of the questions are a little bit tricky that not everybody picks up on but i did it would say uh would you rather be a basketball player or an artist um now the reason why they would ask that is you know a basketball player you have to play with a team whereas an artist you're by yourself then it would ask another question like, would you ra rather go to a football game or would you rather go to, um, I don't know, some event where you're by yourself? So again, they're just trying to weed you out to see if you are a team player, if you're, if you're able to get along with people. And then there's other questions that want to see how angry you get, how quickly um, you lose your temper, etc. But anyways... I, I passed it, no problem. And you don't know the results until they say up to 10 days later. In my case, it was the ex it was 10 days exactly. And then all of a sudden, I go on the website, I hit the refresh button, and then, wow, I got a firearm permit number, and now I am um, qualified to carry a firearm. So um, that whole process, I'd say it took close to close to a hundred days so from the day I qualified to get a um, well excuse me the day I took my first class to get a firearm permit to the end process took me a hundred days now it's safe to say that if you get that paper in a mail that uh, you need to take a psych exam then then you're good that means all the background cleared and everything. They're not going to send you to take the psych exam if you failed anything else. So that gave me some satisfaction because you know I was worried. Like man, this background check. What if, what if anything pops up? What if that ticket that I got driving, um, five years old disqualifies me? Or maybe, maybe I've bought too many guns in the past. Or maybe I'm I'm on some sort of blacklist that I don't even know about. So you know your mind starts fabricating things and you're like wow um i might not get this permit it's already been 70 days they haven't it keeps saying pending it hasn't um been approved and then all of a sudden i get this paper in the mail saying oh you need to take the psych exam and then i did a little research and i said they would not send you that 
paperwork if if they felt uh, that you failed the um, the initial application process. So uh, let's see here. Yeah, and there you go. And then you get issued a firearm permit number. You'll get a little card that you're supposed to carry in your wallet at all times. And uh, now you can start working armed post. Uh, my next video, I'm going to do a video after this one. And I'm going to talk about my first day carrying a firearm and what it was like. Um, but that's, that's, again, that's the next video. And the last thing to mention is your um, firearm permit is good for two years. After that, you have to requalify and all that good stuff. Now, in the um, course of having this permit, um, every six months, so the day you get your permit, let's say I got my permit today, every six months, I need to requalify at the gun range uh, to hold on to this permit. So be prepared for that every six months. As a matter of fact, they suggest that you do it um, four months, every four months, because um, the process, there's there's so much paperwork and red tape, um, it, it may, so I'm all over the place, I'm trying to make this easy to understand. So you have six months after you get your permit to requalify, right? Well, if you wait for that last minute, your application can take six months to go through. Now all of a sudden they're gonna send you a letter and say, hey, you can't carry your permit because um, you, you know, you you haven't requalified yet. So uh, all the instructors and people I've talked to says don't wait until the six month mark to requalify. Rather, do it in four months because the paperwork can take a few months. There you go. If that makes any sense. So after four months, requalify, and then four months after that, requalify again. So you have to requalify twice in a year, preferably every four months. Um, and then the next year you have to requalify again twice. So in two years, you're going to requalify at the range four times. Okay. Now in two years, your permit is going to expire to carry your firearm. So you need to take that class again. Um, now, again, you don't want to wait till the last minute. You don't, you don't want to wait um, one year and 11 months and say, you know, what? I'm going to take the class now because again, there's like a hundred day waiting period um, before you can get research, you know, you get your permit um, stamped again, you know, for another two years. So try to get that done a couple of months before your, your card expires. Otherwise you might find that your card expires and then you can't go to work, you know, like with a driver's license uh, right now we're in February, my driver's license expires in August. And I'm like, yeah, I'll go to the DMV in July. No big deal. And it really isn't a big deal. I mean, they'll give me a piece of paper. It's a permit. They'll give it to me right there on the spot. Heck, they might even give me a card right there on the spot. But with your firearm permit, no way, dude. If you, um, if you apply for it like today, I might not get that renewal updated until five months from now. And if I wait it till the last day, um, yeah, I could be asking for trouble. Uh, all in all, the entire process, the course, the um, all the paperwork part of it took me, cost me, I should say, about 500 bucks. So that's something to consider. Um, I don't know if I can include the cost of the range. When I went to the gun range, I actually... Um, it cost me 65 bucks. So I needed to buy two boxes of ammunition. So that's a hundred rounds. Then there was a the range fee and a couple other fees. It came up to like 65 bucks. The course itself cost me $400. Then there was a the price of fingerprints. The psych exam was $60. So, so somewhere in the area of $600 it cost me for this entire course. Um, $600 and a lot of time. Uh, I had to wait so expect four or five months and six hundred dollars and then you'll be armed all right so in my next video I'm going to talk about my first day on uh, uh, being armed what it was like and uh, we'll go from there again if you have any questions just feel free to um, ask me in the comments 
other than that, guys, be safe out there. Take care.